my goodness! Yeah! Yeah! Holy oh sh! Hey there, cock knuckles. Today, we're redrilling a bolt pattern. Um, like many of you, I'm kind of a cheap ass. And also, I like the challenge of figuring things out myself instead of taking something to a machine shop. Um, what I'm doing today, let me flip down. This is for my Ronchero project. This is a 2008 F-250 frame that I've shortened. And I'm putting a 57 Ford Ranchero body on it. I'm using an AAM rear axle with a... A uh, eight on six and a half bolt pattern, and I'm changing the Super Duty front axle to match. Um, yeah, everybody thinks that not everybody, but a lot of people think you want to change the bolt pattern on something, you got to take it to a machine shop or something. But I've done over the years, I've done various uh, bolt pattern changes and done it all myself. It just takes a little ingenuity and patience. And like this one here, this is a 65 Mercury Marauder. I put disc brakes on it from a 78 Mercury Marquee. And those of you that know that type of car has a 5 on 5 bolt pattern, but I wanted the 5 on 4.5. The reason I went with the Mercury Marquee brakes instead of like the T Bird that already was 5 on 4.5, I wanted the larger rotor and brakes because I didn't see me ever putting a 14 inch wheel on this, so I just still had the bigger brakes. But yeah, I had to. Uh, Redrilled this 5 on 5 pattern to 5 on 4.5. I've also got... I've got my snowplow Bronco here. When I got this thing, the drum brake, well, all the brakes on it were just shot. And I put, I just had a, a Chevy 6-bolt axle sitting around. I robbed everything from the steering knuckle out and put on this. And for a couple years, I ran the 6-lug set up, but... I don't know why it just kind of bothered me. I don't know why it would matter around here just for a snow plow, but one day I just pulled the hubs off and I redrilled them to five on five and a half. Honestly, it took longer to take everything off and then put it back together than it did to drill, redrill the pattern. So, yeah, you don't need a machine shop to do this. So, uh, let me get my stuff gathered up and uh, we'll get started on this eight lug pattern. It's the first time I've done an eight lug pattern. Let's take a closer look at this uh, unit bearing. That's, uh, that's a pretty thick flange right there. Plenty of other people have redrilled these. Obviously they redrill them between the original. And uh, just as I kind of suspected, I need to find a, a wheel stud with the knurled area right down in here. Um, I have three options here on hand. I have a late 80s sterling axle so here's the sterling hub i just pulled the wheel off and turns out this old uh what's left of a truck bed and frame i was going to make it into a trailer years ago and never did but uh, yeah it looks like the studs might uh good chance it might work for me i'm going to go ahead and pull this hub off because those studs i think they're too long to clear i don't think i can drive them out of there before they hit the backing plate but Okay, so the first thing I need to do is get these studs out of the uh, unit bearing. And then the first piece of my puzzle is this uh, brake rotor. I am pretty sure this is off of a 78-79 F250. Um, I, did, I was initially looking for a wheel, and my criteria was the center here. It needed to be big enough to fit over the Super Duty hub index. Uh, this was the only thing I found in all my crap around here that fit over it and it's it's almost a nice snug fit but there is a little bit of gap i'm not saying there isn't something else out there that would work i'm just saying this is what i came across here um i suppose it might i'm going to go ahead and cut this off here with a cutting wheel because all i want is this flange here it would probably be possible to do this with a good rotor i know this one's bad it was in my scrap trailer Thank you. 
All right, here's the end result. And we'll drop it right over that Super Duty hub. As you can see, not a perfect fit, but almost. Now, obviously, at this uh, center out of this rotor, I will be using that as a template for drilling. Um, and yeah, because it's not quite centered, I could try to just eyeball it, but the plan I've come up with, I'm going to use this feeler gauge. I was messing around with it earlier, and it seems like 10 thousandths, let's see here if I can read this. Well, it doesn't matter. Your results may vary anyway. Whatever size feeler gauge it takes, I'll go around, yeah, and maybe three, four spots around it and center it up that way. So what I'm going to do to hold this in place, I'm going to drill a hole on opposite sides right there. And those holes will, they won't line up perfectly with the original metric pattern, but I'll use a smaller bolt so that will give me room to move this about. And then where I'm happy where I've got it, I'll tighten the nut and bolt on each side and lock it down and then double check it and make sure it hasn't shifted. So what I've done here is measured across these two, split it halfway, and marked it with a sharpie, and then just kind of eyeballed the, the radius of the bolt pattern and moved out a little bit to match the metric pattern. It's not going to match. It doesn't have to match. I know they say that uh, the only place that close counts is playing horse grenades, but close is going to be good enough for this because I'll be using a lot smaller bolt here than what the holes are in order to allow some movement before I lock it down. I got it drilled. Here it is. And as you can see, even with the poor camera angle, the holes do not line up. And they don't have to. Like I said, you want some movement here. Okay, as for the hub, I did pretty much the same thing as I did for the uh, template. I tried to measure roughly across here as best I could and get a halfway point. I mean, honestly, just like the template for the lockdown holes um, and playing horse grenades, close is good enough. Uh, where the hole is through here isn't critical. Just, yeah, try to get it in the middle as much as you reasonably can. Um, what is really important or the more important factor, let's see here if I can do this. Yeah, you should be able to, yeah, not, not the drilled hole that you drilled in the template, but the actual stud hole. That is what you want showing on each side. Now, like I said, going between the original metric bolt holes isn't critical, as long as it's roughly in the middle. What is more critical than anything is you get this template centered as much as reasonably possible on the hub. Uh, just another note, I pulled the template off. I wanted to point out that when you're, if you're going to use this method and when you're using the feeler gauge, you don't want to just jam that thing in there as deep as you can get it. As you can see, there's a radius there. You just want to push it in there enough that it adequately engages the hub and the uh, template. The rotor template. You go push it in too far and you're just going to keep pushing the, your template out this way. Then when you go to the other side, you're going to push it out this way and it'll just never end. So yeah, don't get aggressive with your feeler gauge. Just put it in there maybe a 3 16 of an inch. All right, I've got it pretty well centered, I think. I used a, a 10 thousandth feeler gauge, which seemed to work pretty good on this particular hub and uh, template made from a brake rotor. Uh, my lines are still pretty much centered there. Okay, I got it centered up, got the bolts set in there, got them finger tight. Let's see if I can get them tightened down without messing it up. Uh, I did mess around with uh, trying 11 thousandths and 12 thousandths. 12 thousandths just wasn't doing it. It was just pushing the, the uh, template ring around. But 11 seemed to work pretty good. It kind of would push it around a little bit if I got too aggressive with pushing it in too far. Another thing I noticed is... Uh, the Super Duty hub flange sticks out just a little bit around here. I don't know if that might be a possibility to use that as a measurement, but I would much rather go with the hub, centering up by using the hub. All right, let's see here.
think I still got the 11. Yeah, 11 there. Let's see how I did. So far, so good. I'll take it. A little bit of drag in a couple of them, but yeah, I can definitely get the feeder gauge in there. So uh, I'm gonna call that good. And uh, let me explain to you what I'm gonna do for drilling. There's two options. Okay, so anyway, as I was kicking around options to do this and thinking about it, I was digging around through my crappy bins over there of bolts and whatnot. And basically I came to the point where I was thinking about making a sleeve that would fit into these so I could use one of my transfer punches because my largest one is way too small. And I thought maybe there was a sleeve over there from a shock absorber or something, but uh, I came across ah, get this thing zoomed in too much. Let me, there we go, that's better. Anyway, I came across this GM brake caliper slider bolt that still had its sleeve on it. And it fits pretty much perfectly. There's just that... Ah, damn shadows. It's just the tiniest little bit of slop there. And what is it? I've got... Like I said, there's two, two options you could do here using that slider bolt sleeve. And a transfer punch, you could just go ahead and punch your locations, take the flange off, and then drill it. What I'm going to try to do is just leave that in there and use, I already have the right size drill bit that I can just, you know, drill it with the uh, template and that sleeve in the place. And I might even try putting a wrap of tape around the sleeve just to, to snug up that little bit, but I think a, a one wrap of tape is just going to be too tight on that, and it's just then it won't go in. Okay, I tried one wrap of frog tape, and it still had just a tiny little bit of slop in it. I tried one wrap of electrical tape, and that's that's pretty snug. You can't force it in there with that wrap of electrical tape. You gotta gently kind of wiggle it in there. So I think that's what I'll use. I'm going to go with the drill it out with the uh, template on there. And I've never done this before, so you're along with the ride with me. All right, we've moved to the drill press now. We're almost to the moment of truth. As you can probably see, I've got this piece of uh, threaded rod running through the hub and through the table of the drill press. Um, I've already, it's not tightened down yet, but... Uh, in the past when I've done stuff like this, yeah, I want to get in here and run the drill. I, incidentally, this drill bit is 7 16 After I drill the first hole, I'll pull the sleeve out and then put in the other bit, which is a 21 32nd. And uh, yeah, before I even drill or lock anything down, I want to carefully run the bit down in there and I see there's no no deflection going on. It's not dragging. It's going through there nice and smooth, so I'll go ahead and lock it down. Wondering if I shouldn't have, wondering if I shouldn't have found something a little heavier duty than that piece of angle iron, but it was sitting around at the moment, so. Seems nice and smooth. Oh, 
lighting in here isn't the best. Yeah, it seems like I saw that move. I don't know what I can really do about it. Yeah, there's, it's hidden somewhere there. My drill bit is bent. This is a major problem. I may have to go to town and get a new bit. Hey, look, everybody, it's Steve! Yeah! How you doing, buddy? Ha <laughs> ha! Brand new drill bit, and it's the Titanium. All right, just got back from town. You guys all know town. Everybody hates you. Kids all try to beat you up. Got this new drill bit and it does seem to be better, so let's press on, shall we? idea I don't need to show you me drilling out all eight holes okay got all eight of them drilled well the initial 7 16th hole it's probably not going to show up very well because of the lighting in here but they look pretty damn centered by my calibrated eyeball yeah you know, the shadows aren't doing it justice but I'm going to take the template off and drill it out to, what was it 21 30 seconds see if that's good enough for the wheel studs just use the existing 7 16 holes and bit to line everything up. Now I'll tighten it down, tighten the hub down, and just change the bit. Okay, they're all drilled out. It's these ones here. Looks like they've all, there's like this ring that runs around here. All eight of them are just barely encroaching on it. Looks like about the same amount. So I think I'm in pretty good shape yet. Now here's my next challenge. Wheel studs. Let's see, what holes is it? These ones right here. They won't clear the uh, mounting flange. So I'm going to have to and it looks pretty much symmetrical all the way around all four sides so i'm just going to take a grind either do one of two things take a grinder and clearance it out in here or do every one of the lug studs and do it right there another word on these lug studs i salvaged these from a late 80s f-250 with a sterling rear axle and these came out of the rear axle um and it's not just because I'm a cheap ass and I had them, but uh, you've been wrenching as long as me. You've discovered that uh, wheel studs you go to the parts store and get are absolutely crap. They do not hold a candle to factory wheel studs. So they're, yeah, even discounting the cost of those overpriced pieces of shit. I'm definitely salvaging up these for myself. Much, much tougher than what you get at the parts store.
took a lot more grinding than I expected it to. Get these studs pressed in and see how well it fits the wheel. Okay, so for the rotors, I could go ahead and just uh, do like I did with the hub and drill another set of holes in between. But what I think I'm going to do, because the, uh, the inner diameter of this rotor fits snug over the hub, it, uh, it, it can't move in these directions. All it can do is shift this way, possibly. So seeing as how it should be pretty well held in place, what I'm going to do is uh, just egg out these holes to fit over the... Uh, the lug studs. I've done that before on my van. So when I did the rear disc brake conversion on my van, I used early Super Duty rotors. And of course they had the metric pattern. And that was even, I, the the index here didn't fit the, the rear hub, but they, they seem to work just fine. That, uh, that, that should work even better for this situation. So I'm gonna get the die grinder out and get after that. Okay, here's the finished result with the brake rotor. As you can see, the holes are, I just uh, egged them out. It still fits on there nice and snug and I'm not getting any any uh, rotational, what's the uh, slough, variation, movement, whatever you wanna call it. Um, I'm gonna try fitting a wheel on here now, see how, how well my studs fit. Here's just an old trailer wheel I had sitting around next to the shop door looks like a pretty good fit and what I did notice the uh, Super Duty hub index is damn near a perfect fit for this trailer wheel I didn't notice that before but I didn't yeah I, I could have if I wouldn't have been able to find a brake roller that's initially what I was looking for was just a wheel to use and I would have just cut the center out and used the wheel as my template I would have hated cutting up a good trailer wheel like that, but uh, I would have done it if I wouldn't have come across that brake rotor. Looks like everything's a go, I'm put it back together.